Welcome back to Roy on Rescue. I had some great responses to this last episode that we did on cardiac arrest out in the wilderness while hunting, hiking, or doing other outdoor enthusiast types of activities. And a couple of the questions I wanted to address right away and I was going to just simply email back and then I thought, you know what, I think a lot of people might have the same question so why don't I just do a continuation of that episode and answer a couple of these questions. Well, so the first one was, okay, so you're out in the wilderness, um, you begin to have chest pains, Are there is there anything that you could do medicine-wise to help the victim as well? And yes, absolutely. In fact, unless they don't know they have a heart problem and it comes on suddenly, they probably have already been prescribed a couple different medications. One being nitroglycerin tabs, which are taken under the tongue. We call that sublingual nitro. It, it, it creates this vasodilation effect, which is exactly what we're trying to do. You know, when you've got a blockage of plaque and it's, and it's blocking and then you get a, a piece of clot or plaque in that last little margin that's not occluded, the, the vasodilation from the nitroglycerin opens up the vessel and even though the plaque and the, the buildup doesn't move, the vessel expands and that's what allows the recirculation of blood to flow and hopefully relieve some of that infarction or some of those early signs of, of the starvation of those muscle cells. So they could take their, their nitroglycerin um, as prescribed by the physician to see if they can relieve that problem. If, number two, they have baby aspirin, chances are they probably take one every day already. And if they already take a daily you know, prescribed dose of aspirin, an additional aspirin it has been noted to not really do that much more. For those who don't take baby aspirin, so let's just say that you're out camping or whatever and you've got aspirin with you, Unless the individual actually has a severe allergy, which is not very normal, or has some really severe reasons why they shouldn't take aspirin, um, a baby aspirin is really quite benign. It's over the counter. And to take an aspirin or one adult aspirin, the way that that works <clears throat> is it's not so much that it's going to break a clot up but the action in the most simplistic way to explain it, it's this almost like a lubrication between the platelets. Now, don't take me too literal here, but it allows the platelets to slip by each other easier. So when blood is clotting in an occluded or a narrowed artery, this platelet sliding next to each other is a good thing so that we don't have this, you know, the, basically a log jam, if you will, of blood cells which only creates a bigger problem. So if the person doesn't take an aspirin normally and they do develop sudden onset chest pain and there's an aspirin available, by all means that's part of the protocol now is to go ahead and offer them one. You can't prescribe it to them, but they can just take it themselves. Obviously those will only be if they're conscious and feeling chest pain, but those two different things are definitely um, a good idea to do when an individual has chest pain out in the wilderness. Okay, and then you would follow the same directions as we talked about before. Call 911, ideally get them out of the woods with an all-terrain vehicle, um, or hopefully you're not far away from a, an intersecting road. Give them the coordinates so that they can intercept that patient and get them to help and get advanced life support on the way. Okay, now, there was a second question <clears throat> that was kind of on the heels of that one. Not so much maybe related to hunting, but it was to being an outdoor enthusiast and being outside and wanting to hike 
in gorgeous territory, but having some other problems like maybe severe asthma. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. The same rule applies when you talk about wilderness medicine, and I just brushed up on it a little bit again as I was looking at wilderness medicine protocol, and they kind of like, at least this book that I was reading, kind of likes to go back to the idea that, that there are three major <clears throat> operations of the body, and they create the three legs of a stool. And if one of those legs is taken away, the stool fall. So they're pretty important legs. And one is the neuro system. The second is the cardio or the circulatory system. And the third is the respiratory system. And none of these three legs to the stool can be compromised and be able to really, oh, wait. Wait and call. Uh, wait until your pickup party comes. So in other words, if anything happens neurologically, circulatory, or respiratory, it's a life-threatening emergency and it calls for immediate evacuation. If an individual has severe asthma, um, I guess I would go into saying, is it controlled before you go out? In other words, are you really kind of laboring? Are you taking your nebulizer treatments because you're you have a lot of inflammation you're already you know kind of struggling having to use your rescue inhaler from time to time more than usual maybe you're fighting a respiratory cold maybe it's the allergy season maybe you've got some triggers going on a lot of stress in your life it just might be the the wrong time to go out in in a way it might be better to wait until we can get that inflammation down. Maybe it's after a prednisone round. Maybe it's um, after you've, you've been able to shrink those inflamed bronchioles and, and alveoli. Uh, maybe it's after you're past your respiratory infection and you're really doing quite well. You're not using your rescue inhaler. You're just taking your normal medications. And you haven't even run into any problems on moderate to severe exertion. Um, so it's a timing issue, I think. When we talk about, I have severe aller, uh, asthma, and I want to go out, I, it's not going to stop me from hiking. What if I have an asthma attack out on the hiking trail? There's still some room for prevention, and that's what I would probably use, is do I already have sensitivities? Do I already have inflammation? Am I already struggling? If so, postpone the hike, wait until we get into a better place, and it's more controlled, and then maybe we go out. Now, if we are already controlled and it's just a situation where you have flash uh, asthma attacks <clears throat> um, and you've got to have your rescue inhaler, well, make sure you've got your rescue inhaler and your spacer um, because that's a, probably about all you're going to have to try to get you back out of the, out of the wilderness before you can get to an ambulance. You know, obviously you could activate 911 and get them on the way to a pickup point but that rescue inhaler is going to be really a lifesaver. Hopefully we don't have a lot of resistance. Hopefully it's not going to be a one of these asthma attacks that really clamps down. And we can't even get enough of the albuterol in to actually open up the airways. That's always a risk. And I, and I think, you know, we can still adopt that same concept to asthmatics as we can to cardiac um, patients. We must understand there's this element of risk whenever we have this chronic problem and we go out into the wilderness away from immediate response. You know, actually, I'll even take it one step further. We take some element of risk anytime we go out away from civilization and do extreme sports, extreme behaviors. Not that hiking in the wilderness is necessarily extreme, but it can be. Mountain climbing can be, spelunking can be, um, running can be, martial arts can be, uh, contact sports can be. Again, does that mean we stop living? Not at all. But we do need to think about how do we get out of this alive if something bad happens. And I think in this situation, it's just going to be really vital to plan ahead, have the medications with us, and if we think we're at risk more than, than usual, postpone the trip until we're feeling better. I hope this helps. From Roy and Rescue, have a great day. Bye-bye.